This month, News 4 investigates your food. Our series will now turn to the cutting edge in food. Today's topic, GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. And many shoppers may be noticing a non-GMO label on some products. What is that about, and how do GMOs affect the food you put on your family's table? Here's News 4's Luke Moretti. I think a lot of people think that a GMO is um, harmless, and that's not necessarily the case. She's a consumer. If they sit back and look at the science of it, they're safe. He's a conventional farmer. Both are talking about GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, one of the most controversial issues in food today. What are GMOs? You probably eat them all the time. One estimate is that 70% of the foods in the U.S. have a GMO component. Products containing sugar beets, corn, or soybeans are likely to contain GMOs. Some GMOs help plants fight insects. Others allow plants to resist chemical sprays. You can now move genes between organisms that normally couldn't cross before. Do GMOs harm humans? Margaret Smith from Cornell University says genetically modified foods are safe. As a scientist, I see no evidence that would suggest reason for concern with the products that are being commercially grown and used in the food system right now. Michael Hansen, a biologist and GMO critic, says animal studies raise flags. There was also a long-term uh, feeding study that was quite controversial that found increased tumors in, in, in um, animals that were fed engineered crops. Um, again, that work needs to be replicated and looked into. Mark O'Brien, a molecular biologist in the University at Buffalo Medical School, considers himself a neutral observer in the GMO wars. He says scientists have discredited the animal studies. There's, a, again, a pretty strong consensus uh, among the scientific community that these are not well done experiments. O'Brien says GMOs are safe. I don't have any uh, uh, any stake in this, other than the fact that I think it's important that people make decisions based on accurate information. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says there's no difference between GMO and non-GMO foods. And companies like Monsanto that produce the seed say GMO crops are safe. GMO opponents object to how the government approves GMOs. Companies voluntarily submit data that the FDA reviews. Consumer advocate Patty Lovera wants the FDA to conduct its own studies. We don't have a system that's going to find problems because they're not looking for problems. And the research is being done by the companies that want to sell them. Michael Hansen is worried about how genes are changed. If it goes into the wrong place, it could shut off a gene that's normally doing something important or turn on a gene that does something bad. You just don't know. While unintended consequences are possible, O'Brien says required testing is a safety valve. They are tested that minimize these risks. All of this leaves shoppers like Lori Green in a quandary. I don't think there have been studies and definitive answers on how it's affecting us. At the very least, critics want the FDA or individual states to join the 64 countries that require labeling of GMO foods. A bill is pending in New York. Peter Horvath, University at Buffalo nutrition professor, says labeling would tell consumers what they are eating and allow for health studies. If they're not labeled, how can we say, how can we follow this population and they say, I ate da-da-da. We don't know if that has GMO or modified foods in it or not. You have the last word. General Mills added a non-GMO label to its Cheerios box after consumers rejected a plan to use GMO ingredients. Other companies are labeling too, but there are no federal standards. Now, regardless of what you think about GMOs, consider this. What if genetically modifying a crop is the only way to save it? That's what's facing Florida orange growers. Can GMOs save orange juice? That's tomorrow at 6. Luke Moretti, News 4.